Hello and welcome everybody to my lecture about understanding the electric grid, its requirements, structure and grid stability questions, which are essential to provide safe and reliable supply to everybody of us. So your benefit of the course is basic understanding of the principle of the electrical grid, understanding the tasks of the individual devices and how they are assigned to supply, electricity supply, and the explanation of typical solutions as state of the art. What I will not do is I will not give detailed engineering, but only general explanations based on fundamentals. So there are two streams to explain the electric grid. One is energy as a global quantity, and the other one is power as a local quantity. So global versus local. And for the sake of completeness, I show you just which chapters must be dealt to understand this wonderful complex of the electric grid. But today we concentrate on the law of conservation of energy, energy conversion, and now let's get started. The first point of everything is the law of conservation of energy. So the law of conservation of energy says the total energy in a closed system never changes. So this means in mathematical expression W, which means work in terms of energy, is constant all over the time. So it is not possible to create or to destroy energy. Energy can only be converted between different forms of energy. So now let's look into this conversion process. The conversion of energy is also derived from this basic formula. The energy of the whole system is constant. So if, for example, we have two areas, one and two, and their sum must be always be constant. So this means if there's a change on one side, there must be an opposite change on the other side. And if you allow me as a professor to make a differentiation, if you differentiate this expression, you arrive at the universal formula of the power. This means the power on one side is minus the power of the other side. Or in general terms, what goes in must go out. Or the other way, what goes out must go in somewhere. So there is a permanent equivalent. Now, which types of energy can be converted between each other? So there is first potential energy going up a mountain down. So this is done in an escalator elevator. We have kinetic energy, which is running motion, like in a car or rotating machine. It is tension energy. That means if you compress a spring or if you have deformation energy, like cutting bread, this is tension energy that is used and converted. Everybody knows the chemical energy, like in gas, fuel, fat or food or, or any other carbohydrates. Then we have nuclear energy. We have the radiation energy, like the solar radiation, the energy that comes to the, us from the sun. And the thermal energy for heating, boiling water. And last but not least, electrical energy. Electrical energy is done and transported within the electrical supply system, the electric grid. Now we come to a little aspect of physics. The electric power is given as the product of voltage times the current. And the energy is power consumed over a certain time span. So it's an aggregated power something like this. So in mathematical forms, it's voltage times current times times. So a physicist approach is given in this formula, but for more practical reasons, we can say the voltage in kilovolt, the current in amps that gives you kilowatt. Maybe you have seen this on a nameplate of a device, a motor, an electric heater. And for more practical reasons, if we give the voltage in kilovolts, the uh, current in amps and the time during which this energy and the power is flowing in hours, then we arrive at the kilowatt hour. So chemical energy, there is a general rule, one kilogram of coal, one kilogram of gas or cubic meter of gas, or one liter of mineral oil, which again is one kilogram of carbohydrates, is something like 10 kilowatt hours as raw energy. Then compare it to the 
energy content of a battery, one kilogram is only 0.03 kilowatt hours, so much less. So you see, in chemical energy, there is a high power density and high energy density. So the radiation energy, just to give a rough calculation, what comes out of the sun can be used on Earth, is one square meter of solar radiation during one hour is one kilowatt hour. And this can be transformed into electricity, as, for example, in photovoltaics. And in thermal energy, to give a rush calculation example, if you heat 10 liters of water from cold to warm, then you need one kilowatt hour. So now let's make a practical example. You see here an escalator and the lady being brought up from down to the first floor. So this means in the sense of the law of conservation of energy, we must put in electrical energy in the, into the motor at the bottom of the escalator. And this is used in term to raise the energy level of this person into potential energy. And now there is a little calculation. If you're interested in this, I suggest that you make a screenshot at the end of this little sequence. So, Speaking as a physicist, we can put this formula m times g times h. m is the mass, g is the Earth's acceleration, it's a constant, and h is the height between where you start and where you stop. And if you carry out these calculations step by step, I do not explain this in detail, I suggest make a screenshot. So finally, you arrive at a energy of 0.0011 kilowatt hours. And now it comes. Maybe you can transform this into some other thing, into money. Because if you think that you pay for each kilowatt hour so and so many amount of money, then you find out this as the equivalent of something like 0.04 cent. This was quite dry, I think. Now let's go into something more appetizing. Let's talk about chocolate. So again, we have the law of conservation of energy. So the electrical energy, the potential energy can be given as an equivalent of chemical energy in terms of chocolate. Tasting lies. So here again, I give this calculation and we arrive at 0.18 grams of chocolate, a little chip of chocolate only. And let's see, I have made it here into the yellow circle, expanded, you see, just this little chip of chocolate is the chemical equivalent of the electrical energy or the potential energy. Unfortunately, whenever we transform something into another entity, like energy into another form of energy, we have losses. And they are represented by the efficiency of the process. Efficiency of 100% means all that goes in comes out where you need it. But unfortunately, we lose some energy. For example, when you drive a car, you buy gasoline, you get from A to B, but while you drive, you generate a lot of heat that is left behind. So it is not useful energy. So when you turn chemical energy, for example, into mechanical energy or into also into mechanical energy and electrical energy in a power plant, the efficiency is something like 30 or 45 percent. If solar energy is converted into photovoltaics, we have an efficiency of something like 15 percent. If solar energy is converted into plants, the food we eat, the efficiency in agriculture is lower. And good news for everybody who deals with electricity, electrical energy into any other form has a high degree of efficiency. For example, take a motor, a motor has 95, nearly 100%. And the electricity which is fed into the grid comes out at another place, has an efficiency of 97%. This is why efficiency is so high in electrical grids. Now, a third rule or a third example of conversation. Again, we have this lady moving up and we found out that the equivalent of moving her up is 3.8 kilowatt seconds. Now the question is, this is one person. If we have 20 persons, how much energy do we need? So for 20 persons, it's 20 fold, 3.8. So it is, right, you got it, 76. And now we want to find out how must the motor be sized? So, you see a little bit of mathematics when you flip over the quantities in this equation and we assume that these persons are 
brought within a time of seven seconds, each one up to the first floor. Then we arrive at the power of 10 kilowatts. And now big, big, big surprise. You can see it here. This is the motor that transport the ladies or these 20 persons up. And its rating is 10 kilowatt. And now to conclude, we have determined the size of an escalator motor without any using volts and amps, just grace to the law of the conservation of energy. So here we come to an end. I thank you very much for staying on with me. I hope you got an appetite to follow more of my explanations in this lesson about the fundamentals of electric grid. And please stay tuned. Bye bye.